I'm bringing to you one of the most exciting group of studies uh, that we have ever brought. It's called compulsive obsession. Uh, this is not uh, a, a new uh, subject for me. It's one that I have dealt with for many years. One that I am intensely interested in. Why does a human do what he does? <laughs> I think science knows today why a monkey does what it does. They have studied the activities of monkeys. Of course, psychology ha has sought to understand why man does what he does. But I am not sure that they have been able uh, to, to solve their problems. Man is so complex in his divine makeup. Now, you have to believe that. Not natural makeup, not biological growth but by his divine makeup of, of a creature which is a spirit and he is a soul. They're, they're opposites, very great opposites. Uh, what one has to do uh, with that which uh, is a spirit life and one has to do with a natural mind, emotion, and will life. And of course, the third one has to do with your bodily functions. Uh, with your five senses. And these are the areas that we're going to talk to you about and discuss with you. These talks could change you, could change your family. They could change our world. If we just listen carefully, obsession. You know, uh, we, 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 we've had books written on the magnificent obsession, you know. And, and many have read the story and seen the film Moby Dick, and, and we've entered into the obsession, you know, of Captain Ahab. And, and so, uh, you know, we have had a look into this world, but now we're gonna penetrate it, and we need you uh, to move with us into this. I have written a book uh, that has sold wonderfully well, and we're, we're very thankful for that. It's called Unprovoked Murder. Is it insanity or demon possession? I have some lessons on this besides the book that you can obtain. Uh, why does a man stand on a street corner with a gun and shoot a man sitting in his car? And this has happened in San Francisco several times. And, and uh, you've never seen the man. You don't know his name nor his address. You didn't look at the license plate to see if he was from New York, Arizona, or California, and shot him. Why would a person do that? Immediately you know he's not normal. And the judges of our country will say he's insane. Now, that is a reflection on the judge. He knows how to handle that gun. He knows his own address. He knows where to go buy food. You know, he does so many things normally but in this certain area, he is absolutely abnormal, you see. In, in my book uh, here, Unprovoked Murder, <laughs> you, you will be excited to know that I was in London, England, the day that the Ripper took his 13th victim. I was there that day. And they, well, in the book here, we give you a lot of the people that he, that he killed. And they, they, they finally found him. I think he was a man that drove a truck and had a wife and kids. But something would happen to him. And, and uh, he, he moved from one dimension to another dimension. And he became something else. That's what we're talking about now. Obsession. What is obsession anyway? When it's compulsive and you're no longer your own. You're no longer in the driver's seat. And then insanity has to be ruled out because if you're crazy, you're crazy. You don't know the way home. You can't drive a car. You can't work. But the people we're talking about are normally very sensitive people with the work that they do. The man Casey in Chicago was a, a clown for the Democratic Party. And in all their big meetings, he entertained them, and, and uh, he knew politics. He knew how to get people elected, and yet he had murdered so many people and buried them under his house. Why would a man 
murder people and that he had committed fornication with and, and uh, homosexual acts with, why would a man kill those people? And I believe the law uh, said that he even had fornication with them after he killed them, with, with a dead man in the bed. Why would a human do this? Now this is what we're moving into. If we can get you understanding that we live in a world where men do very strange things and don't pass it off and hand it to the psychologist. He's in line for help as much as you are. He's the only person that went to a school and studied a, a few things out of books and, and that's all he knows. It, it, well, I am not one of those persons. I have lived a long time. I have lived in over a hundred nations of the world. I've dealt with every culture on the face of this earth as to why they do things. Why do they do this? Why do they do that? Why do they do the other? You know, I'm right in there with them. And so it is not a matter of me coming to you at this time and saying, let's learn together. I want to teach you something. And I want you to help me to get into a spiritual warfare that will set humanity free. Because you're going to see that only one person is the answer to this colossal problem. His name is, is Jesus. Now, I have exercised this power for many years of setting people free. And so I am aware of what we're talking about. And I want you to become aware of it. I want you to know why, why, why people do all kinds of very strange things. In, in the book here, we go into the occult. How occultism leads to unprovoked murder killing of little children and so forth uh, like that. And so we want you to come with me and, and let's, 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 let's have a, a penetration series uh, together and believe God for the answers. I believe <laughs> that there are millions of people living right now who do not know and do not understand compulsive acts Compulsive desires, you know, not normal, not natural, not human, that takes a hold of their inner person and drives them. I've studied these people for over 50 years. What can we do for them? What if a whole nation gets like that? What if in our nation we get so overwhelmed with the obsession of, of homosexuality that we can't think straight anymore? Because I've had homosexuals to tell me that when that spirit moves in them, they grab any human they can find out there to commit this act with. They're driven to it. And when they hate themselves for doing it, they go back and do it again. This is a dynamic series of talks to set people free, like yourself. To set you free. And we want you to move into it with faith and with hope and with confidence that now we're moving on the right track I wish a hundred million Americans were right there where you are right now. America needs to understand and know. We could take this under the line of poverty. Poverty can become an obsession, not a reality. In a land of plenty, it can become an obsession. And you have to be delivered from, if you'll pardon me, a spirit of poverty that's taken a hold of you and set you free from it so that you can be a person who knows that you know and that you can do remarkable things that you've never dreamed of if you can get your spirit moving in the right way. Anyway, there are millions of people today who want to understand why compulsive acts, compulsive deeds, why they bring erratic social eruptions. Dear God, Nine out of ten of every marriage that goes under divorce shouldn't have gone. 
Somebody should have been there saying, hey, wait a minute here. This is a compulsive obsession you've gotten into. Back up a little bit and give us room to kneel down and pray together. And let's see what Jesus can do to make you another person, to make your home another home. The person you married is just as nice as when you were deeply entrenched in love with them. The devil has eroded it. Let's clear out the erosion. We believe that we have some answers and we want you to help us with these answers. We hope you grab this thing and tell it, tell it, tell it. Show it, show it, show it. Until our whole world will say, hey, hey, we got to get into this thing. We got to understand it in, in, in Jesus' name. So there are social eruptions that we don't understand. Uh, there are religious absurdities in our country today, even in evangelical ranks. Absolute religious absurdities. Looking for some strange power without Jesus. Looking for some force. An unusual thing when they should be reading the Bible and getting their ups and highs from the Word of God. They're there. Every time I read the Bible, I get an upper. I don't need a pill. I get an upper from the Word of God. Reading it, you can too. I challenge you to read the Gospel of John. Just one book takes you one hour. Read it. You'll get an upper like I do. And I want you to have it. Social eruptions. Why? 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 Religious absurdities. Why? In our modern society, we have all kinds of excuses. The devil made me did it. That became quite popular on television. Some says, I heard a voice. Yeah. You need to hear something more than a voice. You need a spank on your behind. You don't know which voice is of God and which is of the devil. You say, what would you do if you heard a voice? I discovered, I would discuss it with very intelligent people to see if it was a voice of truth, the voice of rightness, a good voice. The Bible teaches that. You read 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Even prophets can be judged by those that sit by to be sure that the prophecy is clear and clean and coming from heaven and not from a man's own feelings. If a preacher isn't careful, he can have a problem on a Friday and he's preaching the, 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 the problem on a Sunday calling it a revelation. It's a revolution, not a revelation. So we got to know the source from which these answers come. And we do have that source. We're not walking in the dark. We have that source. You can have it. You, you can have it. Yeah, that's right. And we want you to know that there's hope for you. The people watching me right now that you throw dishes against the wall and later you say, oh, my broken dishes. Why in the world did I do that? You tear up a dress. You break beads. You throw your rings into a wood pile or into a trash dump your wedding rings and, and so forth. And then you say, well, why did I do that? All right, that's what we're dealing with. And we're going to deal with it until we get through to you. Because we're calling this series, How Do You Cope With a Compulsive Obsession? Now, I want you to stop it. Before I was converted, I, I knew this, before I was converted, I would get so angry, I'd lose my mind. I have fought boys four and five and six inches taller than I and beat the daylights out of them because I was so obsessed I wanted to die if I didn't beat them down to the dirt, you see. But when Jesus came into my heart, I've never one time had a quarrel or had an anger that I wasn't in complete control of, <laughs> you see. I'm going to teach you control. I'm going to teach you victory and not defeat. I'm going to teach you that if you're going to be obsessed, have a Jesus obsession. They're good. Jesus was obsessed, you see. God the Father's obsessed. He couldn't be otherwise. 
when he said, I want to give my only begotten son that he might save a world of transgressors and sinners. It was the Lord Jesus that gave us the word from the Father. And it's in John 3, 16. God so loved. That's an obsession. So, so loved. You know, you can admire, you can like, but when you so love, that's what, that's what gets a man married. And that's what gets a person divorced. So hate. The same piece of machinery you've got inside of you that loves also hates. Same piece of machinery. One's positive, one's negative. So you have to look inside of you and say, I'm getting the positive side of this thing. I wasn't born on this earth to tear it up. I was born on this earth to build it up. I want to challenge you right now that don't let any of us go one week further without making our local circumstances nicer than they were last week. That's a good thing. If your house is run down, don't blame it on somebody else. Why don't you fix it? Why don't you paint the spots that need painting? Some people are destructive. They've got, they've got the wrong motivating power behind them. And they need, many times, they need a spiritual deliverance because you are a spirit. They need a spiritual deliverance. And oftentimes they need a solical deliverance. Their mind needs to be reset and refocused, you see. And their emotions. We are a vast emotional people. And there are people in our country taking terrible advantage of this, which is a terrible thing. It says that this is one of the most popular television shows in America. This magazine here is the, is the mass media operation for television stations. It says that this man here has grabbed the, the, the prime time that he has it. And it gives you the, the stations, you see, where he's on in prime time. Philadelphia, New York, Dallas, Houston, Cleveland, New Orleans, and the time that Freddie is on there with the knives on the end of his fingers. Now, for America to crave this sadism, for America to want this, I'm going to hurt you before I'm through. You might as well get ready for me. For you to crave wrestling that we have in our wrestling arenas in America, where they stomp and beat humans down. That's like the arena in Rome 2,000 years ago with the gladiators. And you hoop and yell, and they tell me it's a few years ago, our society would not even permit it to be on the air. And, and, and here we have it there. Now, let, let's go just a little further now. I, and if you're obsessed with football, is it the ball or the man laying on his back on the ground, beaten down and maybe his back broken, you see? With boxing, see, I, I knew Joe Lewis a few years ago. We have sat down together because he became a Christian. And we'd be talking about Jesus and he'd say, just a minute, Start over. My mind isn't right. He had been beaten in the head so many times. Do you have an obsession to see people hurt and beat? I don't. I like golf. I like basketball. I, I like, you know, things that don't hurt people, that don't beat other people down, and that don't destroy them. Don't let a destroying spirit Obsession. Come into you to where only destruction. I've heard of men that walk into their own homes and just start knocking things as they go. That's not living. That's dying. I'm come to help you. I want you to stay with me. 
because this is just part one that we're working with, and this is an introduction to the weighty things that we're going to move into. Young wives have never been disciplined, grew up in a home and nasty to the parents and crazy with the morals, and then suddenly becomes a, a wife and a mother. She don't know what to do with herself. She is obsessed with desires, with movements, until she doesn't know how to treat her baby. Can you imagine the news that we're getting today where a stepfather takes his little three-year-old daughter, four-year-old daughter, five-year-old daughter, and tries to have sex with her? Can, can, can you imagine the obsession that's in a person that caused them to do that? Now, come on. I, I, I'm with you, you know and you're with me. And I'm talking to the whole of our land, maybe more, to the whole of our world. In the last days before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to this earth, we're going to have obsessions like Sodom and Gomorrah to where a visitor can't walk into a city unless the men of the city grab him and abuse him. And that a girl will not be able to go up in an elevator by herself. She'll need an escort. Obsessions. I'm ready to deliver you. Lord Jesus, help my friends to get every one of these lessons without missing one. And help them to know that this is the biggest thing we ever got into together. That we haven't come to criticize and downgrade and push back and to accuse. We have come to see the human person set free, made happy, made peaceful, that really lives and prepares for the eternal life with God. Now we ask you to bless my friend that's watching me right now and hearing me and do a miracle. Please receive it now. You oppressive spirit, I command you to come out <laughs> and that you be set free by the power of Calvary where the Son of God gave his life as the Lamb of God to set free this world of obsession. I want you to be free forever in Jesus' name. Now you can receive these lessons by audio tape. Exactly what you've heard, it's being made right now. By videotape, to fit into your video machine. I wish a million videotapes could go out to America on this subject. Our whole nation has gotten into a corruptive state to where we have to say compulsive obsessions doing things that we shouldn't do by compulsion that we can't set ourselves free. I want you to write to me. The address is right there on your screen. The two things I want you to do, I want you to order the, 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 uh, the videotape and or the audio tape, and I want you to assist me in getting these things out to the ends of the world. I can only do it with your financial assistance. I'm only one person. I've got the message, and I need you to distribute it. Why don't you right now, please, go to your phone, dial that number on your screen, and say, this is what I want to do. Now, why don't you right now make out a check and say, hey, you're on the ball. This is what the whole nation needs from the White House to the outhouse. And I'm ready to help you and bless you in this. I want you to stay tuned for the next session because it's coming up real quick. Thank you very much.